Let's, so let's talk about good times. Let's talk about good times. The show that really uh, defined uh, much of my uh, upbringing. I looked to that show for for guidance. Um, that family, uh, the Evans family, was the family I wanted, but with some money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it was like okay, didn't have money in the Evans family. The Evans family is perfect, but if, if they could just have, some, if James could just find out a way to get paid. <laughs> They, and every time, every time we got a little money, or every time we looked like we were getting out of the ghetto, yeah, happened. Oh Back man, they uh, get out. So, so many great memories from watching that show. So many epic episodes. Yeah, yeah. You played uh, Thelma Evans, yeah. Thelma and Evans <laughs> Anderson. Let's let's not leave Keith. Oh, out don't forget it. the Anderson. Yeah, let's that not forget Keith. <laughs> Have you? Is, what's the status? Uh, I think I, did I hear something uh, some tragic about him? Yeah, he passed away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he and passed was, away. Um, wow. About back. four or five years ago. Yeah. 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 That was that show was so well casted. Like all of those characters like seem so real and seemed like you had somebody that you knew in your life that was that could fit that character. Yeah. Your character going back to what you were saying about wearing your clothes tight, but still being classy and not vulgar. You remind me of a girl named Banjo I went to school with. Banjo was about the same uh, skin tone as you also. And she was knocked down gorgeous. And she wore her clothes uh, form fitting also. But Banjo was classy, like never thought of her as vulgar, nasty or whatever. And she also had a beautiful attitude about life, such as you. It was hard for people to hate her. Even the girls that wanted to hate her, I saw those girls become her friends. She just had a way of communicating <laughs> with people. So, uh, yeah, I could, I can definitely, uh, I could definitely feel that. Okay, so you played the sister of JJ and Michael, and the daughter of James and Florida. Did y'all have like a, a, a family type atmosphere off the scene, you know, off camera? You know, it's really funny, but um, although we, we only met each other when we first came on the set, mm -hmm. I mean, I did a lot of each other before, um, we had a family feeling. We all did. It was um, it was an amazing cast because no matter what our lives were outside of good times, the moment we came on that stage, JJ was my brother, Esther was my mother, John was my father, and they felt the same with us. I don't know what it was, but it really was a magic, and we all just it felt like a family. And to this very day, we still feel like a family. Right. We still Beautiful. do. Beautiful. Now, we recently lost uh, Janae Du Bois in February. Uh, Janae uh, portrayed the neighborhood. Malona. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she, Malona. Yeah, she portrayed the neighborhood gossip maven and friend to the Evans family, Malona. Uh, you guys had recently gotten together for some type of reunion. Did you yes. know that she was ill? Um, she had expressed to me that she had had, you know, some some um, little little problems here and there, but she never did. I mean, she was healthy, and she was healthy looking. Um, so we never ever saw it. You know, she but we saw her a week before she passed away, and and on my on my Instagram, I have our tribute to Kobe. Cause Kobe had just passed, mm -hmm. so we all 
we love you, Kobe, and all that. And she was there. Johnny Brown was there. And um, who would ever think that it would be her, the next one? Yeah. Just yeah. Looking good, doing well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't could... know what happened. I think she passed away in her sleep. You credit Esther Rowe with uh, being your acting mentor? My mentor and my Hollywood mom. Your Hollywood mom. So you guys were really, really close. Yes, we were. Yeah. So when she passed, do you remember what it was like getting the news? Yeah. I do. Um, before she passed, my little daughter was about three then, yeah. and um, we would take her every every Tuesday and pick her up and take her to her doctor's, and then when we come back, we'd stop at the Soul Food Place in Baldwin Hills, and then I would, and then she would have her dinner, and then I'd drop her home. So this one uh, uh, Tuesday, I said to her, Mom, I'm going to the Bahamas to do a play. And I'll be back next Thursday. Okay, because I'm going for the weekend. I'll be back next Thursday. And I said, when I come back, I'm going to make you a pot of vegetables. And she said, okay. And then she, she looked at me and she said, and she grabbed my hand and she said, I want to thank you. And I said, Mom, what do you want to thank me for? She said, I want to thank you. You are a good daughter. Huh. And I looked at it kind of strange. I said, oh, Mom, come on, you know. I said, thank you, but I'm coming, you know, back. And she said, no. She said, I know. She said, but I want to thank you, and I love you. Hmm. I said, I love you. And I said, I love you, too. And then she looked at Brittany and said, I love you, little Brittany. And Brittany said, I love you too. Mm -hmm. And then I watched her walk to, the, um, to her door and she went in and waved and we left. Um, I went to the Bahamas and came back on the 17th, I think it was, because that was that Thursday. Mm -hmm. It was that Wednesday night. And I woke up that Thursday morning, because I was going to go over to her house. I woke up that Thursday morning to the news that she had passed. Did you know that she was gravely ill? I knew she was very ill, but I didn't know how ill. I just kind of got the feeling that something was not going to be correct when she grabbed my hand and told me what she said. That, that was a little, you know, it's like sometimes they know they're going to go. And just in case they don't tell me, they told me. So that bothered me. But the day I got back is the day she passed. Yeah. So she knew, I guess she knew she would never see me again. Yeah. At her funeral, did, I mean, did she have a... Uh, did she no, have she had a memorial. She had a memorial. And, and did, the, did, the, did the whole cast show up for the memorial? The whole cast showed up. That's good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. As it, as it should. Um, let, let's switch. Let's switch gears a little bit. When when the show Good Times took off, and it reached a point to where you were like, "Oh my God, <laughs> this thing is bigger than I ever thought it would be," and you couldn't go outside or you couldn't go into the public without an escort. What was that like? Well, it was really um, a lot different than I had expected because I did not know how popular the show was. Because mm -hmm. we were all at CBS and, you know, we would work every day and Working, we wouldn't really yeah. see a lot of people. So one day they had a book, they had a signing, an autograph, something at one of the malls. Mm -hmm. And the mall was so crowded that I was saying, who's there? <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> who's there? Who's there? Yeah. And when we came out of the car and everything, the, the crowd screamed. I said, they're there for us. That's when I realized. Right. <laughs> that that happened to me. Uh, I remember when I first 
it happened in music too, but I remember uh, when I had my first professional fight and I, I had an after party and before we turned on the main street where the after party was, the, the police had the streets blocked off and, and it was barricaded. And I, was, and I asked the limo driver, I said, man, I said, what's going on? And he said, oh man, that's for y'all. I said, for us? And we turned on the street and we, I just saw car, car, cars everywhere, people everywhere. It was like, everywhere. it was just people everywhere. And it was cold. It was December 18th. It was wow. cold. People everywhere, thousands of people everywhere. So that was about, we had to turn away like 3,000 people. That was trying to get into the wow, crazy, amazing. But, yeah, but I, I, I definitely that moment was, of to realize it, huh? Yeah, I remember that feeling with Ghetto Boys. We were at a radio station in Los Angeles, and we pulled up at five thirty in the morning. We were doing the the morning show. We pulled up. And it was people everywhere at 5.30. And there were people that had normally work in the office. And this lady that works in the office, she said, it was an older lady. She was like, baby, uh, you know, I don't get to work till nine o'clock. I work in the office, but I had to get here to see y'all. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was something else. And yes. then, so we had, these, it, it was crazy. So I know exactly. You know. <laughs> That, and that's that was, why I love my fans so much because yeah. they're there for us, you know. They're there. When they love you, they love you, you know. Right, and my right. friends have shown me nothing but love in all of these years. And it's so funny because my generation, I have like um, about three to four generations now. Because, you know, the older, yeah. then you have the 40-something, the then you have the 30-something, and then the younger people don't know as much, but the ones that do know, they they're know. all up in it. They're in it. Yeah. Speaking of the ones that do know, my daughter is 25 and my son is 20. I turned them on to Good Times about 10 years ago. I gave them the box set. And oh. we, were, we were living overseas in Azerbaijan, so they didn't have a lot of time to do much of anything in their idle time but watch movies and stuff. And so I turned them on to Good Times, and I mean, they've oh. been hooked ever since. Oh, they're going to flip out Thank when you. they find out that I'm interviewing you. Uh, they're gonna, <laughs> Thank you. They're going to flip. They are big, big fans. Uh, yeah. What's the craziest fan experience you've ever had, good or bad? Uh, well, um, I had one bad and, and mostly all good. I had this, this uh, husband and wife, I think it, we were in Philadelphia and um, they came up and they, uh, they knew I was going to be there and he dressed like uh, Lenny. And okay. I don't know who she was dressed like, but she was, I think she was dressed like Thelma and he was dressed like Lenny and they opened up the coat. They had all the, the different items in the coat. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. He says, I am Lenny, and you know, and I've got plenty. And they did the whole little routine for me. I thought that was too cute. Yeah. These days, I would have taped it, but I didn't, you know, back then, though. No. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was good. That's that a good one. So what's the bad one? And of course, one? I had a stalker. That's the, the bad one was the stalker. Yeah. Now, what stalker was this? Was this stalker number 1,000 or stalker number five? Because <laughs> I know well, you have I must have, But this is the one that connected himself in and would write me three letters a day. It started back in 1976 or 77. He came to one of the shows and, um, and uh, he started writing me. And I wear contacts. You know, I wear glasses, so I wear contacts. I wear one, actually. But at the time, I didn't have that in. So I can't see my audience. I know they're there, but I can't right. really see individually because I wear glasses. Right. So we can't, so we were doing this. So when we do the, uh, the show, I, I don't have my glasses on or nothing. So I come out to make my bow and I look straight ahead. And, he's, and he, wrote in, he wrote in a letter to me 
when you opened your eyes and looked at me, when you looked at me and stared at me, <laughs> that's when I fell in love with you. <laughs> but I was staring into space because I couldn't see anything. Right. So he fell in love with me then because he came to the show. And he was has been right. He wrote me three letters a day in the morning, breakfast, what he wow. did when he got up. He was going to go ride his bike and in and, and, and the one in the evening. Now, all three of these letters changed. Like the first one had one handwriting. The second one was a little different. But the late night one looked very gothic. But to come to find out, the man was on heavy drugs. And during the drugs, the, the, the handwriting would change. I had so many letters from him for so long. This man literally followed me from state to state and everything until I got to New York and I had just given the, um, the, um, the um, AFTRA my um, new change of address. So nobody knew it. And when I got to New York, a big bouquet of roses were sitting there at the door. Mm -hmm. Come to find out he got a job up in the after building in, you know, the union. So anytime an actor or an actress would change a dress, he would get it. So he always knew where I was. And uh, yeah. And the last time that he connected with me, he was so bold as to write his address on it because all these years, I mean, nothing happened to him. And this had been now about 30 years. 30 years. Um, years? A good 25 years. And um, I had another incident with him. Uh, I was doing poetry somewhere in, at the inner city in Los Angeles. And they had had the, a photographer come in and take, you know, if you wanted your, your stuff taped. So I made an appointment to do that. So the photographer was there taping me. And I had done like 10 pieces of poetry just he and I in a, in a dark room. And the very next day, I got one single rose and a letter and a little note. And it said, it said, thank you for the poetry and his name. Wow. I freaked out. He was, so he that was, was him. So he was there. He, he was the one taping me. Did the police ever question him? Yes. When I got to New York, he wrote his address. I took it to the police because he threatened in the letter. And when you threaten someone, then that's criminal. So he said, if you don't write me back, I'm going to come there. I'm going to come to New York to see you. So since he knew my address and he said, I'm going to come to New York to see you, that's a threat. Mm -hmm. See me do what? What are you going to do? And so the, the police um, did stop him. Man. See, like, perhaps it's a good thing that we was not, like, related or you wasn't, like, my woman or something because I would have probably stopped. Now, well, I ain't no probably to it. I would have stopped it, you know. It, it, it wouldn't have lasted that long. But you can't find him. There was no, no way to find him. Oh no, I would never left an address. If if he, he can find you one time. If he can find you. I could have he found can find him. me. He can uh, find me. But I did not know that he was working up there. I didn't know he, he was a functional nut. Wow. Stopper. I didn't know he was one of the people that found my address that was working in the after building. I didn't know that. So how long has it been since he's seized contact? Oh, it's been about mm, a good eight, 10 years maybe now. So you're thinking perhaps he's dead or something? Well, he's not dead, but he did write one more letter and, and it came to my post office in Los Angeles and, it, and it was the last letter. And he uh, said that um, he did name his daughter Bernadette. No, he named his daughter December because um, my birthday's in December. Wow. And that um, he was no longer going to connect with me anymore because, you know, you know, he has grown children or something. 
And uh, this was the last letter. And it was. Wow. It's like he had a whole relationship with me. In his mind, he had a whole relationship. And, and he ended the relationship saying, I'll never contact you again. This is the last letter. And he never did. Wow. And if he's still working up there, he'll know where I am now. <laughs> but I don't think he is. The, the police got him. You know, they, they made him stop. But he did send that one more letter. Wow. Man, the things that actresses and just celebrities go through. It's, it's crazy. All my letters, all my letters from the jails, which I, I didn't get those. Uh, I had a secretary at the time and she got all my letters, but she liked my letters. She liked those letters. I didn't like them. She probably was writing people back pretending to be you. You never know. She was a little weird. <laughs> she was a weird girl, truly.